train yard. Oh, I think we're live. Okay. Just started. Yes. <laughs> All right, we are yes. <laughs> live. How's it going, Lane? I'm so excited you're here. Thank you so much for joining today. Uh, honored to have you. So excited to be here, Julie. Thanks so much for having me. Okay, we're going to give it a minute because I know um, there's always that great delay on Facebook. Isn't it awesome sometimes when you're doing lives and then it's just like you're talking for 15 seconds and then... <laughs> You're like no one's there. Awesome. It's like back in the Periscope days where you just like sit and. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I never used Periscope ever? I think I did one time. Like my husband was trying to show it off to me. I'm like, okay, I'm like, all right, I get it, I guess. <laughs> You're like, I, I think I actually tried it once and there was like a creeper. He goes, Where do you live? And I go, Oh no, I'm off. I'm off. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to share this real quick. Hey, everyone. Can you guys all say hello to Lane, beautiful Lane, who's joining us today? I'm going to share this over to um, my, uh, I'm sorry, to my personal page real quick. Um, okay, so, one second. Can you guys all hear us? I want to make sure that you hear. Hi, what's up, Debbie? Hi, Carla. Hey, Amanda. What's up, Chris? Hi, Allison. We know Allison, right? Our wonderful Allison. <laughs> Um, okay. Allison. Okay. So Allison, actually, if you're on, can you share this to my personal page? Cause I'm having a little bit of an issue. So I just want to dive right in and introduce Lane to all of you here. Um, and I have her little bio here. So I'm going to look down cause I do not want to botch this up. Cause when I was reading your bio, I was like, every business owner needs you. <laughs> so, Lane Booth is the CEO and scaling strategist. I just love the way that that sounds. Scaling strategist of the Project Booth. Um, she helps growth-focused business owners turn their numbers into a story so they can easily make data-driven decisions, increase profitability, and reclaim their time. That's amazing. And, and so this is what we're going to – I mean – can you just drop a flame emoji if you would like to increase profitability and reclaim your time? Because this is everything I've been talking about so far this year. I mean, as we're coming through this quarantine, just everything, having the kids home, how to manage our time, um, how to how to get that back and be able to still run a profitable profitable business and understanding your numbers. So important. So I'm going to just turn the mic over to you because I want you to share your brilliance. And so can you just start by telling us who Lane Booth is? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you for such a warm welcome, Julie. It's so great to be here and, and to talk with you guys today. Um, and because you know what, guys, like this is where I found that so many budding to experienced business owners were really struggling. Like so many people have like, you don't become an entrepreneur without like some really creative ideas and having some great vision to cast out there. Um, and so like we were seeing entrepreneurs just really love this creative space, but kind of the data and like the tools that, you know, a lot of bigger businesses are using was just kind of being left to the wayside. And yeah. so, um, you know, me, actually, I'm a engineer uh, background, went to school for engineering um here in north carolina go wolfpack um <laughs> no one else knows that school um but <laughs> but um so I, you're a numbers I, girl <laughs> yes always in like i love love my numbers and then even got to work for you know fortune 100 company where um especially in the communication with the c levels you know management and things like you better be ready with the numbers to help make any sort of decision um, because without the clear understanding on what's the risk versus the opportunity, if we go down path A or path B, um, the conversation wasn't moving past the door to the boardroom. So, um, and really what's, what's really great about that is, you know what, this is, this is a fun place for me, but I love to really just be that um, trusted advisor for folks that really are creative, really do have that vision, but they're just not sure how to tap into the numbers. Like, what is that actually going to do for them? 
Um, they yep. hear that it's important, but they're not really sure how it would actually apply. So we that's the part of the storytelling, like we're kind of your data interpreters <laughs> so that you can figure out what's really happening behind the scenes and how can you use that to your advantage? How can you stack that in your favor so that you are making clear, confident, profitable decisions for predictable profits and sustainable growth? Yeah. And that's amazing because I see, I mean, even me, I mean, I'm at fault. You know, when I got started online, I'm a, I'm a creative. I know who I am to my core. I know what my gifts are. I, I, I've gone through all of it. And so I know I'm a visionary. I am creative. I am organically, I'm an, or I'm an organic organizer. So I just fly by the seat of my pants. I don't like numbers. So when I started, I was just creating all this stuff. I mean, Lane, I've had, I, I created 85 sales funnels for God's sakes. Like I just kept creating, creating, create. I don't, right? And this is why I love helping this community because I don't want them to make the same mistakes that I did because numbers and understanding your metrics are so important. So um, let's move into... Like, so when you came online, like, how did you grow your business when you started? Because a lot of people here, they're either network marketers. Um, we have online coaches. We have online marketers, affiliate marketers. We have pretty much everyone inside this community and in Freedom Insiders Club. And really, it is just being what that means is growing that freedom based business without having to feel like you're tethered to your laptop or your phone, creating that passive income. Right. And mm -hmm really working less and profiting more, but you have to understand what you're doing. So you're not just throwing spaghetti at the wall. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you know, interesting as you say that, you know, but as you're starting, you kind of have to throw a little spaghetti at the wall to see what works. Right. <laughs> right? And what you like. Um, but the problem is we like. don't want you to stay there. Right. Yeah. So, you know, once you have built, you know, maybe 20 funnels, like, all right, maybe you dial in, you know, which one of those, you know, few is really working the best for you. Right. Uh, be productive with your time, <laughs> so to speak. Right. So, 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 so yeah. So tell us when you came into the online scene, you know, you were doing the boardroom thing and then how did you make the transition over and then how did you grow and scale your business? Yeah, great question, Julie. So for me, I was I was one of those side hustlers for a while. So I was working in corporate. I had this like passion to move into you know the online space. I've got two little little girls at home, um, and so kindergartner and a toddler. And I was just like, relate. <laughs> <laughs> like hand up emoji, <laughs> getting a little burned yeah. out um, on the day job there, and you know little time left at the end of the day for for your family. So. Right. For me, it was it actually was a bit of a sacrifice to start out, right? So like when you're side hustling, then you take a, way more time typically. So um, I had a lot of lunch calls and um, a couple of Pacific Coast evening <laughs> calls with, with folks um, getting things started, but really just starting to network um, with with online Facebook groups, with uh, you know, groups like this one to figure out all right, what are people you know challenged with? What kind of problems are they facing and how can I help solve them? Right. So it's all about, you know, finding that problem that you can solve, um, you know, really that's second nature to you that seems like a challenge to, to other people. Um, and so for me, it was startup, you know, making those strategic relationships and, you know, found a couple of core people that were also working with, you know, people that I could help. And that's how I started to kind of grow more from, you know, word of mouth and referral networking, um, you know, in the early stages and, and now, um, you know, kind of moving more into, all right, what are some other, you know, bigger advertising or, um, collaboration events that we can do to, to build visibility that way. Awesome. Awesome. So what mistakes do you see that most business owners are making that maybe you could kind of help give some tips on what, what yes. to do, what not to do? <laughs> So glad you asked. <laughs> so, so Julie, I wanted to clarify one thing. And honestly, it's, it's the biggest issue that if you don't solve it now, that as you grow and scale, it's just gonna become a bigger problem. And that is being really clear on your cash flow and profit margins. Mm. I can't tell you how many times I see this, like whenever we work with our clients, that is the first place we go to ensure that they're offering is actually profitable and it's got enough profit margin in there to allow them the, you know, the income they want to have, the lifestyle that it provides. And, and also 
be in a place where you can predict profits in a you know future capacity. Yeah, you know, let's see what profitability looks like in June, July, August. And you want to be able to map that out. Um, so, for example, we were working with a client and um, we did this uh, kind of um, profit margin analysis <laughs> on all their different service offerings that they had. Um, okay. so they had membership stuff. They had some one on one work um, and her one on one packages were actually the least profitable <laughs> because she kidding? was giving so much of her time and her team's time that she hadn't, you know, made enough, you know, price them appropriately for the value that she was providing her clients. And we were actually able to prove like incredible, like 10 X ROI that she was providing for her clients. So it was like a no brainer to raise, <laughs> raise the prices immediately, if not sooner. Right. And, and really position that going forward so that, cause if she had continued to scale with like these razor thin margins then it would just would have continued to felt like she was constantly cranking out material, constantly having to keep up with the team, constantly having to um, find that next client because she was only making, you know, a few bucks on, on each package. Wow. So you had her actually not scale back on what she was giving, but actually just increase her pricing. Yeah. And actually she was offering probably too many packages. So we actually found like where, where were most people, what were most people landing on? What kind right. of, you know, what was most um, being used and then what was the most profitable. And then we ended up with about three. So she went from like seven down to three, A, B or C, you know, ways of working with her going forward. That's really interesting because I feel like as business owners, we, and I'm going to speak from personal experience. Like I never feel like it's enough. And so I always want to keep adding more and more and more instead of really just streamlining. And I think that that's actually why I stopped coaching and doing group coaching for a while because um, I just, I felt like it was eating a lot of my time and a lot of my energy. And I was just like, Oh, and, and sometimes more is not always better. Mm -hmm. and yeah, how many of us have like gone into a course and it's like a bazillion things they're like could you just give me like three and i could get three done <laughs> can this just be a three module course and just get to the point <laughs> like <laughs> it's so true it's so true okay all right so um what okay so what metrics do you think that business owners should be tracking but they're not like what, where should the focus be then? Yeah, that's a great question. And you know what? We see different metrics being more meaningful at different stages of business. So if you're, you know, still in that place of like, hey, I've got to figure out how to generate revenue on a more consistent basis, right. then focus your time on your marketing metrics. Focus your time on the front end because typically once you've got that figured out, it makes it a lot easier to figure out the back end because you've got more experience. <laughs> you get awesome. to learn, learn through the process. So Oftentimes at the beginning, it's all right. How many connections have I made? How um, and a lot of people I'll tell you, a lot of people go to social media straight out the gate because they hear that it's important. And a lot of times it's crickets for quite a while until you have you know, built up an audience and you know what you're doing with them. Right. And then so, people get discouraged by that, too. And then yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so, like, you know, having having that funnel mapped out. So you know, what is, what's going to be that, that first offer that I have for, for them, or what's going to be that first opt-in or what's going to be that first freebie, whatever that is. And then making sure that whatever social you are doing is actually directly tied to the action you want them to take. Um, because if you can then create that, that basically conversion rate or that opt-in rate or that registration rate, now you can start to envision what it looks like to scale. So, Hey, if I, you know, got a hundred, uh, views on this post and 10 opted in, then, okay, great. I've got a 10%. 10%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Which so, is good, right? Is that yeah. considered in the online world having a 10% conversion is pretty good, right? Yeah. Depending on, you know, what, you know, what type of funnels you have, but, you know, for a freebie offer or something, or especially on like a, a social media, you know, exposure, visibility, that's, that's a nice, yeah. 10% opt in. Okay. Um, okay. So what happens if you are not a numbers or data person like me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, do you still like track the met metrics? Because again, I, I, I mean, 
I ran different, so many different ads, different funnels, but I've always hired out ad, ad managers. And I just, I never, in the beginning, like I just didn't care about the numbers. And, and now I can like kick myself in the butt because I mean, <laughs> numbers are everything in your business. They mm -hmm. really are because you don't know what to scale, what to kill, what to, you know what I'm saying? And so again, hello, I created 14 lead magnets. Like you don't need 14 lead magnets. <laughs> <laughs> so again, everyone listening, just <laughs> give me some love. Give Start me some love. <laughs> yes, because you don't need all like 14. You just need one. If And if the one is not producing then you course correct, right? Then you, th yeah. right? So, so like walk us through that. If people are not like all data driven, mm -hmm. can you give us some tips? Like, yeah, I'll say that I'll give you kind of two versions. So like one is if you are you know, still pretty much doing this on your own, or you maybe have a couple of contractors, the best thing you can do, and you only have to do it like once in a while, which most people like, is the first time is when you're setting your expectations, reverse engineer what you want. So that, that may sound, you know, fancy or you know, engineering, blah, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, what is your end goal? Do you want, you know, a hundred registrations? Do you want one client? Do you want, um, you know, so many signups, whatever that is, and then backtrack what those steps are to get them to that point. So this right. really is like kind of mapping out your funnel. So, you know, if I want people, if I want a hundred, um, people to watch my webinar, then how many people do I need to land on my landing page? How many people do I need to click my ad? Um, reverse engineering that because once you basically figure out how much, you know, how many, um, you know, clicks you need on your ad, that can be the one metric that you're really monitoring where you don't have to like follow a bazillion different things. You, but it is really easy to communicate with your, your ads manager or something like that on, hey, I need this many clicks because I know that that's then going to result in the registrations that I want or that's going to result in the opt-ins that I want. So doing that first pass, like when you are setting up your funnel or you are setting up your opt-ins, whatever that is, so that you know, at least at the beginning, what your like thresholds <laughs> are for right. those. Funnels you don't want to change too much. Right. Like at once. So, so what would be like the very first thing you would, you would want to track like, mm -hmm. or look at, is it the ad? Is it the landing page? Yeah. Think? So what's really interesting. So a funnel, you know, looks like this, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So you have the most data at the top of the funnel. The most data is hanging out up there and anything else. If you kind of think of it as like, um, you know, like a leaky bucket. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, that's where you it's holding the most water. You want to be able to make the best decisions at the front end. And then your buckets get smaller and smaller the further down you move down the pipeline. So always start at the beginning because you know what? Even if you've got leaks further on at the other stages of your funnel, that's not going to cost you as much as if you have a terrible, you know, like initial point. So that top of the funnel is really the most important. And you want to work your way through the steps from that point. So if you do have a problem with, um, you know, the visibility on, on, is it the landing page or is it the click through rates? Like start at the beginning of your funnel, start at the top and then progressively work your way through, you know, improving from that stage forward. Yeah. Oh God. I find this stuff fascinating. You know, when I came online in 2000, beginning of 2016, it was like actually when Periscope was big, Facebook live was just starting, right? Right. Can we remember back, back when, and I heard this term funnel and I literally became obsessed with wanting to learn funnels. Now I became overly obsessed because I created so many, <laughs> but I, <clears throat> I just love the idea of creating that passive income. So now that I scrapped all my old funnels, I'm literally like rebuilding my whole brand right now. I moved over to the freedom designer. I'm rebuilding a funnel. Um, I'm coming out with, it's called social selling superstar. And mm -hmm. it is like, I know I'm like so excited. I'm thinking of trademarking it because it's so awesome. And I'm creating this low, you know, your, your low ticket offer, but then I'm working through an Ascension model where it will have, um, four or five touch points to send up to my higher ticket offer. And, you know, it's like, it feels so good to have one congruent funnel. And of course, we're going to have to test and tweak and course correct along the way. But, um, 
but it's all congruent all the way through. And that's the most important piece of the funnel as well is making sure that there's congruency as you continue to build through the funnel. Like, well, I'm going like this cause I'm ascending. <laughs> yes. But the funnel, it goes down to the, to, down to here. So, um, yeah, definitely. I find it fascinating. And the fact that you're an engineer because you're just brilliant. And this is like, you, yeah, you just, you, you understand the numbers where, and that's what, most people do not understand. And that's why they're mm -hmm. losing so much money if they are building funnels and they are running ads. Um, so I just, I love it. I think yeah. I know what's, what's interesting. Um, you know, so I worked, I've worked for an apparel company for you know, a large, um, fortune 100 apparel company. And so like my job was basically to predict sales. So I had to like look at all the numbers coming through, like what were all the accounts buying, you know, what were the sales trends on you know, certain, you know, certain jeans, you know, dark wash versus light wash, and, you know, all these different things. I never had a picture of what that jean was in front of me. I had like a style number <laughs> and like trends <laughs> just <laughs> going out. So um, it's so, so for me, like now after that, like brain programming, basically, like I can look at numbers and be like, Oh, all right, here's the sales trends. I can see how that's floating through, but it's for so many creatives. Like you have to like visually see what is happening. And, and so that was, you know, to kind of stack on, you know, what you asked too on, you know, what to look at a lot of times, the thing that I find is blocking creatives is like, they are inundated with a spreadsheet or they're inundated with, you know, a bunch of text on, on a page or something when really like creating some sort of visual for you, even if it's a bar chart or like a graph or something like will help you like visualize and make that, you know, click happen for you yeah. and your brain so that you can start to understand, Oh, okay. That's how it flows. And Oh, I can see that trending up. Um, that's a, a big piece of what we see when working with our, um, creative CEOs, like, Oh, now I can visualize what this looks like. Not only now, but now I can visualize what it looks like in the future too. If we do choose to scale, scale up this funnel versus that funnel. It's so true. Like if I'm sent an Excel spreadsheet, even just with like words, I mean, I, I, um, <laughs> they do. They really, really do. I would love to have Elson's on here and she's like, Oh my God, I sent Julie. Tax Excel, Excel text all the time. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, but I'm a very visual person and I like mm -hmm. the graphics. I like the designs. I like the charts. I like the infographics. Like I love all those things. And it's because of, like you said, I just, I have to see it in that way or else I'm not seeing it. So mm -hmm. stuff is so interesting to me. Okay. Um, so I have another question. How does tracking the money making metrics help business owners with making like to make more money? Maybe. Yeah, I, that's a great question. And, you know, one of the um, the biggest challenges I think people face right now is they're they're very like closed in on what's happening right now. Like what what are my goals like this week, this month? Um, and sometimes I kind of forget to like take us take a, a little bit of a step back and really see, all right, what are, what are my goals for this business? Like, what is that big vision that I casted? Um, what is my mission? And so the biggest piece that I see people missing is often really putting together a projections month by month of what they want their business to look like. Because when you are really clear on this is the type of this is how much revenue I want to make a million dollars in 2020. I need eighty three thousand three hundred thirty three dollars every single month in order to make that happen. Right. Um, if it's even. But what if you have like a lot of stuff happening in in Q4? <laughs> what if you know October, November, December is huge for you and the other months are soft? So really laying out what your revenue expectations are. This is you know, not only clarity for you, but clarity for your team members as well on you know any contractors you might have. If you're all aligned to the same goal, like, hey, we're all working towards $83,000 for this month. Mm -hmm. What does that breakdown look like? What does, you know, that mean for maybe, um, you know, a low ticket offer? What does that mean for how many high ticket offers? What does that mean for, um, you know, maybe some one-on-one -on -one coaching on the side? Like what does, what compromises that, to get you to that 83. Again, we're kind of reverse engineering what you want your business to look like. Um, but having those month by month with 
you know, a really aligned expectations on your offers is such a game changer. And again, it's just brings the whole team that um, that understanding that, yes, we're all marching to the same drumbeat here. We're all working towards the same goal. Um, and it's also like a bit for you SEO, like it's your mindset, like, all right, I'm, I'm vibrating at that 83,000, you know, right. every single month. And, um, there's a, there's a, um, engineering term too called the Hawthorne effect, which is that which is monitored improves. Like you literally oh, don't wow. even have to do anything else. You just have to like watch it <laughs> and your brain will naturally start to focus on it. Your team will naturally start to focus on it. And it just creates this new like synergy that happens. Um, and so putting out that 12 month forecast for you and your business, such a game changer. I love that. I absolutely love that. And I do reverse engineer and I love reverse engineering. And it's actually how I've built out the majority of my funnels, like my new funnels we're, we're I'm like looking up cause it's right here on my wall. You know, you get like those really big sticky notepads and you just kind of like just start drying. And mm -hmm. so that's awesome. All of this information is incredible. Uh, so did your business, do you run do you actually do you help with building the funnels, creating the funnels, or do you help with traffic? Where, so it really, yeah, how can really interesting. Find you? <laughs> <laughs> well, first, I do want to make sure that folks know that we have a special yeah. event coming up here. Um, it's really all about being productive with you know whatever marketing you have going on, whatever team building you have going on. Um, so guys, you're cordially invited to Productivity Secrets to grow from six to seven figures. Uh, that's happening at scaling2020.com. Um, and that's happening on Thursday. So make sure you register I'm gonna put for that. that. Scaling2020.com. And I am part of that. And Miss Julie is showing up to bring her brilliance as well. And really just, uh, guys, like this is going to be a panel of of, of folks that are successful in business and are really being very candid about what has worked and what has flopped, <laughs> you know, <laughs> along the way so that you can double down on the wins and, you know, prevent the, the watch outs. Um, but yeah, so Thursday. for, yes, Thursday, um, and we would have some live giveaways for those that join us live. They're going to be really fun. <laughs> I can't wait. I cannot wait. And if you're on my email list, uh, you've been, seeing that as well. We've been sending out emails, so make sure you register. Um, okay. So, so yeah, so, so to your point, Julie, the, the question on like, how do we work with folks is really creating those visual metrics so that you can step back as CEO and keep your thumb on the pulse of what's happening. So we are the ones that are looking at your metrics that, so we can identify the problem areas of your funnel. Um, we don't like, we're not setting up the software and pieces like that, but we do use dashboards or, you know, scorecards if you're with the EOS, um, modeling with traction and everything, but those are the, the metrics that you and your team need to keep an eye on to know if kind of that red light, green light, green light, I'm good. I don't need to jump in red light. Hey, this, you know, funnel's flopping. You know, we've got a, a leak here somewhere it needs a course correction. Um, so really keeping that kind of air traffic control <laughs> sheet yeah. you know, available for, for you and your business. Um, so you can see what's happening without, you know, diving into 50 different applications every morning. Right. Cause that's the thing is because there's so many different parts and pieces to it. So it's nice just to have somebody that understands to like mm -hmm. look at it and say right here, here's your leak. This is what you mm -hmm. have to fix. This is what you have to tweak. Um, so yes, I'm, I'll be coming to you with my new funnel. <laughs> Get it up and running. <laughs> Hopefully there's nothing too leaky. <laughs> but um I'm excited that we have this relationship now because you'll you'll be hearing from me. So and then how can people find you? Um Yes. Um, you know, the best place to, to find me, you can go to the website at theprojectbooth.com. Um, and then for, for you folks here in Facebook land, you're welcome to join us over on my free Facebook group, Back in Brilliance. We're really talking about what does it take on kind of the back end operations of your business to have, you know, sustainable growth and scale, you know, simplify and scale along your, your CEO journey as well. Yes. And I cannot stress enough everyone watching how important this piece is to your business. If you really truly want freedom in your business, you have to understand the numbers um, and take it from somebody that ignored the numbers and the metrics for so long, but no longer because I'm smarter. I want to work smarter, not harder. And we mm -hmm. want you to do that as well. So 
join us on Thursday. Make sure you register. Allison, just pop the link in here. And Lane, thank you so much. You My just, pleasure. And I just learned a lot from you. And um, I appreciate you. And I can't wait for Thursday. Yes. Yay. It's going to be exciting. Thanks so much for having me again, Julie. Yes. Have an awesome day. Rest of your day. Bye, everyone.